Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to look at applications of sinusoidal functions. So a sinusoidal function is a sine function, or in this case a cosine function, that oscillates representing, let's say, the height of an object. So we're going to be looking at a Ferris wheel problem. So here is our Ferris wheel problem. The diameter of a large Ferris wheel is 48 meters and it takes 2.4 minutes for the wheel to complete one revolution. The rider gets onto the wheel at its lowest point, which is 0.6 meters above the ground at time zero. We're going to find the sinusoidal function for that graph. So let's start by sketching a picture. So I'm going to give myself an x-axis, which represents the height or the ground level. Okay, our graph at time zero, and I'm going to also have a y-axis. The y is going to represent the height. The x-axis is going to represent time. So let's label those. So time is our x-axis, and our time is in minutes. So if you need to put your minutes there, and our height uh, is the y-axis, and the height is in meters because that's the information that's given okay so we're loading the ferris wheel at 0.6 meters high so i'm going to go over to my y-axis and label 0.6 now it says that the diameter is 48 meters that means at the very highest point, I'm going to be 48 meters above the 0.6. So I'm going to add 0.6 and 48 to get the maximum height of 48.6 meters. Now, I've got to draw a one revolution so you can see the, the sinusoidal graph. So it takes 2.4 minutes to complete one full revolution. So that means if this is time zero, or t is zero, at time 2.4, so when we hit 2.4 minutes, we have completed one full cycle. So that means I need to kind of know where my halfway point is. To find the halfway point, I'm going to add 48.6 plus 0.6. So that's going to give me 49.2, and I'm going to divide that by 2, and that's going to give me, uh, let's see, 25, 24 and a half plus a point 0.1, so 24.6, no, yeah, 24.6 is going to be halfway, so that's going to be this midline here, 24.6 which is halfway. Now, I call that my midline. And what I'm going to do is draw my sinusoidal based on that midline. Now, we also need to find some points in between the time of 0 and the time of 24. So we know we load right here at time 0, we're at point 0.6. That means halfway through the cycle, which would be 1.2 minutes, I'm going to be at the very top. And then at 2.4 minutes, I'm going to be back down at 0.6 again. And then halfway in between time 0 and time 1.2, which is 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.6 minutes, I'm going to hit halfway. And then over here at 1.8, which is 3 quarters of the way, I'm also going to hit this midline. So now I can connect my graph. And each section, each quadrant, each quarter of this represents a quadrant. And there is one full cycle. And of course, we know this is continuous. So I'm going to put an arrow on this far end just to represent the fact that it's going to keep going. But there's my full cycle. So I now have a picture. I can now figure out my equation. So A, A is my amplitude. And the amplitude is the distance off the midline. So from 24.6 to 48.6, this is 
that's 24 meters. Well, that makes sense because my diameter is 48. So I'm going to plug in a 24 for A. Now my D value, the D value is my midline. So I'm going to plug in a 24.6 for the midline. B and C. C is my left right shift and since I'm writing this in terms of cosine, I'm going to have my left right shift is zero because I'm starting right on the y axis. Now, um, my B value, I have to go back and figure that out because B is the period or 360, which is the full period of cosine, divided by the period. Well, our period starts at zero, ends at 2.4, so I'm going to take 360 divided by 2.4, and that's going to give me 150. I believe. Let's double check that just to see. Uh, let's get my calculator out and just double check. 2, 360 divided by 2.4. And sure enough, yep, 150. So that's the value of B. Now, the one thing I do need to account for is the fact that I am starting at the bottom of the cycle for cosine instead of the top of the cycle. So this one is reflected. So A is also going to be negative because I have a reflection. So let's write out the whole equation. The whole equation would be H sub T. So our function in relation to time is negative 2.4. I'm sorry, 24. Our, our uh, amplitude is 24, not 2.4. Uh, cosine. And then our period was 2.4, so the B value is 150. Then we're going to take the T minus 0, so just T, plus our midline. And our midline is at 24.6. So there's our equation to represent this Ferris wheel and the height you're going to be at on the Ferris wheel. So again, this is representing your height and how high your car is at each minute on the Ferris wheel. So let's look at interpreting that. How many minutes from time t is zero does it take the rider to reach the highest point for the second time? Okay, so we've only drawn the graph through one cycle. So this highest point is only after the first, that's the first time we hit the highest point. So if I extended my graph, how long would it take to reach the second highest point, the highest point for the second time? Well, we know we're at 1.2 minutes, and how long is it going to take to do another full cycle? Well, a full cycle is 2.4. So I'm going to have 1.2, which is my highest point, plus a cycle, one full cycle of 2.4. So that's going to be... 3.6 minutes, 3.6 minutes. So the answer to this would be, let me type it out, 3.6 minutes to reach the highest point on the Ferris wheel after leaving the ground. So hopefully that was helpful. You could see kind of how I set it up. So what I typically do as I take the information, we make a graph. From the graph, we then write the equation, plugging in our amplitude, our B value, which comes from the period of 360 divided by, or the 360, which is a normal period for pi, divided by the period of the function. That then gives us our B value. C is our phase shift left to right, and this one started on the axis, so we started at zero. And D is our midline, which is our upshift of our cosine curve. So we go through all those, and then we can use that equation to then interpret. So on that one, we were looking for the second highest point. So we can add this all together. And you could even just label all, all the way out to 3.6 if you wanted to. So I hope this video was helpful. 
on learning applications of sinusoidals.